Jalaraja came in and he could write full on sections and and therefore suddenly the quality of the background score started going up in south indian cinema marhaba rehman would shut all this pressure off and just say you know there's a storm brewing around me but when i just start playing music it all just just goes away some ways he was forgetting what was the past and he was looking at a new world because he composed in hindustani music and in qawwali kind of things his music could go national tracking milestones of an incredible journey spanning 30 years rehman music sheets hi friends how about finding a top take a wow factor in this episode do watch it till the end to grab this harmonic moment of the day ar rehman was born as dilip shekhar his parents were hindu his father r k shekhar was a well known music composer arranger and musical instruments collector dilip grew up interacting with music first hand after his father's unexpected demise Dilip had to drop out of school and work as a session musician to support his family. Seeking answers to their predicaments, the family decided to embrace Sufi Islam. Dilip became AR Rehman. This episode explores how circumstances and evolving faith impacted Rehman and his music. Mr. Menon, how would you evaluate him as a composer of background music? Uh, I I think you know background scores. Uh, have traditionally been neglected in indian cinema because uh, indian cinema for years has been music directors were people who did uh, great songs I and mean, it was seen as a, a song creator so whether it is navshad ji pyar kiya to darna kya jab pyar kiya to darna kya or whether it is sachin dev barman ye duniya agar me they were basically known for that it is only in satyajit ray's films that you know one started noticing oh there's a background score and there's no song but there is ravi shankar doing music for patil vanjali so what is he doing in that oh okay okay then what is jal sagar so there was a, a sort of consciousness and then when mr ray himself started doing the music then things sort of started really climbing in quality the song is indian music it is based on rags and background score is essentially western so when they wanted emotion they were not fully in the western space but they would immediately hark back to an indian instrument so it was one kind of kichdi they did not know how to bring the emotion in western classical music so it was some kind of a you know just get somebody else to do it kind of a thing so it was about uh, calling some musicians uh, some anglo indians will play the drums and some uh, instruments the western instruments some sitarists and all that will come some flutist will come and an odd ball combination will come together and they'll create some sound it was like that it wasn't wasn't that there was a composer sitting and writing a score sheet and getting it done
to lot of musicians who wrote the tune in Sarigama Padanisa could not write the scales that were required for the string section and all that. That changed when um, Mr. L.A. Raja came in and he could write full on sections and and therefore suddenly the quality of the background score started going up in South Indian cinema. Rahman's father had worked in that space and he was aware of the fact that Western classical knowledge is required further. So he had already put him down into training with the same teacher who had taught uh, Western classical music to uh, Elayraja sir. He was sent as an understudy to him uh, as a youngster. So the knowledge of Western classical music was already, you know, the importance was given to him by his father for surviving in the industry. He was aware of it. And when he came in here, he knew that, you know, it is not actually just trying to do music for that shot. It's actually creating a, it's like a song. You know, you're creating something for some two minutes, three minutes. You may only use one and a half minutes. So what was happening with Mr. Raja and all of that, they would say, okay, this is the point and there's this point. So this kind of scoring is actually to lift something which has already been shot. So it's like an addition, but that doesn't become a background theme music. Background theme music is music, but which doesn't have an antara mukuda, you know, kind of a structure of a song but has a kind of a symphonic structure where there is a kind of a yearning emotion which is there. That Rahman caught on to. And his best musical score which made him really famous worldwide was Bombay. And Bombay, the idea was not about the city burning, but it was about the longing between the mother and child. So it was a completely different way of looking at it. <laughs> Even when he was having these kind of thoughts of, you know, let's look at a completely different way of looking at a song, you traditionally had this sexy song in uh, you know, Indian film where there was a heroine who like a cabaret song. And when you came to a song like in Rangila where Hey Rama ye kya hua hai Aise hume satane lage This is so musically complex and longing that you don't expect it for a, uh, you know, sexy song. And then the way the strings are coming in and the kind of uh, combination between a bhajan and a western classical clash. So he was doing these kind of strange things. Then he had experimented with... In Mani's film Tirda Tirda, where Rasati Yamasakaman Kuli Nipona Tedi Varadaril. There was no rhythm. Rasati Yamasakaman When the family decided to move to other faith, you were somewhere around. We were discussing it yesterday. Uh, would you like to talk about that phase? Yeah, I mean, there was a period where. Um, you know, they didn't know much of Hindi and it was a period where um, there was conversion and uh, there used to be some fakirs coming from Gulbarga and various places and sometimes they didn't even know what these people are speaking and I would sort of be a translator. So I've seen this period of uh, how the family gravitated um, more towards religion and belief and things like that. And then it is also the period of uh, where um, there was a lot of pressure within the families, some sisters, marriages working, not working, and uh, the pressures that were coming in. And 
Rahman would shut all this pressure off and just say, you know, there's a storm brewing around me, but when I just start playing music, it all just, just goes away, you know. And if everything is pleasant and fantastic, then I don't want to sit on music. God is giving me these problems so that I can just go and get clarity when I do music uh, and everything becomes clearer. So I think it's a very different kind of way of thinking that he has in sublimating himself to the divine. <laughs> How did that impact his music? I believe after embracing Sufi Islam, he started learning Hindustani music. Yeah, I, I think when he, uh, uh, you know, uh, went in and uh, went through this process of faith and, and conversion and all that, you know, in some ways he was forgetting what was the past and he was looking at a new world, you know. I think by nature, great musicians, whether it was uh, who break through and try doing something else, are also spiritually uh, in search. I mean, be it uh, somebody who's born a Christian but looking at Hinduism in a different way or a Hindu looking at Islam. But actually what they're doing is they're altering what is sacred within their space and what is sacred musically and what is sacred spiritually. And they are breaking free from where they were to look at something new. And I think in the case of Rahman, he just discovered Kavali and he discovered Hindustani music and he discovered whole Middle Eastern kind of minor scale and all that kind of stuff, you know. And also the kind of rhythm structures that came in, the clapping and the co-singing, the energy of singing together, the chorus, you know. I mean, we didn't have that many choral songs, but Kawali, you know, you, there's an energy when many people sing together and there is a kind of, a, you know, that sing, sing and sing and you feel the power of uh, God. It's not one individual singing. <laughs> I think that's what makes it different. So, and it's also his ability to concentrate becomes more when it's the song is within three to five minutes than it becoming very long. Khayals are too long, you know. So you needed to bring it in with a certain rhythm. So I think rhythm and the melody and its ability to repeat itself and you know get it into higher and higher and a trance and feel that excitement. I think Kawali's played a very big role in his musical compositions and. Uh, also the role of the rhythm. And he being a person who could play the keyboard, he was naturally percussive. And because he did jazz, he was very good at going off beat and, you know, trying the different chords. And so there were different musical influences that come in. He's, he's not typically a rock based uh, singer or a typically a pop kind of a thing. His, his idioms come from various, it's eclectic, it's, it's very different kind of things that come to him. And I think that process of transition was very important for him because he uh, bought in a new kind of sound and a new kind of melody. Because he composed in Hindustani music and in Kawali kind of things, his music could go national. It's very difficult if you compose a melody in completely Carnatic music for it to go national. Because Carnatic music was created in South India when the Marathas were ruling. So in Carnatic music, there's a lot of Hindustani rags, but in Hindustani, there's not enough Carnatic rags. So, so for if, if somebody from the South wants to go and crack North India, you have to compose in North Indian ragas, and then you should know the Kavali. 
And that was an impediment for a lot of South Indian musicians before that. And Rahman had captured that, that his tunes were there and he was really fascinated by the way people were singing and not necessarily the guzzle. He was fascinated by the rawness of the way people were singing and the kind of pure kind of devotion that was there in Kawalis. And he could feel that in the way the, uh, the, uh, uh, the Sardar singers uh, were singing or ending. So whenever groups sing, there's a kind of energy that he really likes. Rahman's music, one hearts beyond all borders. Tal gave him his rightful place in Hindi cinema. Tal also stood out for its choreography by Ahmed Khan. He also choreographed Mudhalvan, its Hindi remake Nayak and Gajni. Rahman composed music for films that Ahmed directed. Choreographer director Ahmed Khan will join us in our next episode. Stay with us. So what was happening with Mr. Raja and all of that, they would say, okay, this is the point and there's this point. So this kind of scoring is actually to lift something which has already been shot. So it's like an addition, but that doesn't become a background theme music. Background theme music is music, but which doesn't have an antara mukuda, you know, kind of a structure of a song but has a kind of a symphonic structure where there is a kind of a yearning emotion which is there. That Rahman caught on to. Do you agree that this indeed was the moment of the day? Is your choice different? Whatever your mind says, write it in the comments section below. We will be waiting. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, press the bell icon and stay entertained.